this is going to be a back and forth comparison between my custom SDR settings for black frame insertion and regular SDR settings without black frame insertion. And I am shocked to see how close it looks. This is just incredible. So I'm going to turn off the lights and I'm going to show you the settings I have on filmmaker mode. And again, I'm going to show you my custom SDR settings for black frame insertion. I'm going to do that at the end though. So let me show you here. Filmmaker mode, game optimizer mode. So this has black frame insertion. Let me show you. This is with black frame insertion. This is very important because this is a big deal. This is using OLED Motion Pro High on the LG C1. So I am comparing that <laughs> without black frame insertion, which is a big, big, big deal. Now, filmmaker mode, I'm going to go under clarity. So you see that there is no black frame insertion. True motion off, okay? This is huge. From filmmaker mode without black frame insertion to my custom settings with black frame insertion. This is incredible. It looks almost the same. If anything, my settings are more visible. <laughs> okay? So you get more visibility near black. Just a tiny bit. It's almost the same. I might even, you know, be more conservative even but i i like it <laughs> it looks almost the same and i like it if it looks a little bit more visible i am fine with it what it cannot be is less visible than than reference let's say so let me show you the filmmaker mode settings and at the end i will show you again my custom settings so i will also compare i want to compare uh, during the day so during the daytime on the game. This is Cyberpunk, okay? I'm gonna compare the day too. So let me show you the settings I'm using on Filmmaker mode. OLED brightness 75, contrast 85, gamma 2.2, and the colors, auto detect 55, warm 50. And as you can see here, the calibration, I didn't touch the calibration, so it is a different calibration from my custom settings there's no basically i didn't uh, there's no adjustment here on the on the on the 22 point calibration there is no adjustment near black you see no adjustment so let me change before i go to the daytime let me change this to gamma bt 1886 so basically these are let me let me show you my my face these are the recommended settings by HDTV test for SDR on the PS5. I'm going to have his link in the description of this video. So you, you see that these are the settings that he recommends for SDR as accurate settings. Okay, of course, accurate out of the box settings, the settings you the best accuracy you can get without calibration. Okay, so he recommends BT1886. And these settings that you see here okay the colors and auto detect worm 50 this is what he recommends okay so i'm going to compare that back and forth with my custom settings so you see that of course my custom settings are gonna be brighter now because it is it was looking like gamma 2.2 so now if we compare this with my custom settings it looks more visible near black okay this is my custom settings with black from insertion. And these are the HDTV test recommended settings for accuracy. Okay? On, H on SDR. Again, my settings for black from insertion with black from insertion. HDTV test settings accurate without black from insertion. You see, my settings look more visible. Of course, I have Gamma 2.2 and I am tweaking the 22 point calibration. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to find uh, a good shot 
during the day on, on Cyberpunk. Now let's take a look during the day. What is the difference on the daytime? So this is Filmmaker with Gamma 2.2. Now let's take a look at my custom settings. It looks almost the same. <laughs> almost the same. Again, Filmmaker mode without black from insertion, Gamma 2.2. My custom settings with black from insertion. Take a look at a different shot. So you can see the color red. That's why I choose this setting, this um, part, because you see the color red on the car. So you see the difference in the color gamut because I am using color gamut native with my custom settings. So I'm gonna go back and forth again. So game optimizer mode, let's go to filmmaker mode. Filmmaker mode. So take a look at this color red. We, sh we should be able to see more saturation with my settings because I am using color gamut native and that's not accurate. You see, this red is popping more. That is not accurate. But the reason why I have to use that color gamut on native is because I am pushing too much brightness for black from insertion and the colors get diluted, okay? The colors get diluted. And I much rather have a little bit more colorful picture than to have a desaturated picture. That's a no-go. <laughs> so I'm gonna go again from my custom settings to filmmaker mode. You see that color red? See the red, 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 that color? With my setting, it looks better. <laughs> okay, I like it more. So let me change now the filmmaker mode to BT1886. So these are the HDTV test recommended settings. And of course, he doesn't recommend filmmaker mode, but the reason why I'm using filmmaker mode for gaming is because that's the only way I can change back and forth. Okay, BT1886. Now, let's compare that with my settings. See my settings, BT1886. So you see, really, let me turn off the light here. So you see, with BT1886, the color red looks more saturated. When you increase the gamma, you increase the brightness, you turn, on, turn that peak brightness on high, you lose color. So now with BT1886, the color red of my custom settings actually looks closer to the accurate colors. Take a look at that red color again, filmmaker mode. I'm gonna change it to my custom settings. Take a look at the car. It looks almost the same. My settings, they, they are a little bit more saturated, but it's very small, very small for, for what I can see. So I, I'm not even sure if that difference is coming up on the recording because my camera cannot capture the redness of that color gamut on native. So let me show you my custom settings. I show you already the HDTV test recommended settings. And this is not a knock on HDTV test at all. This is, this is just me telling you, hey, the difference between my custom settings and settings that are supposed to be accurate is actually not a big difference. <laughs> it's very close, okay? If anything, my settings, they look brighter near black, okay? With black from insertion. So that's the, that's the magic of this calibration that we can basically play with OLED Motion Pro with good picture quality, okay? With a picture quality that people are going to like. So the reason why people don't use the feature is because it looks dark and it, you feel like you're crushing blacks, it doesn't look good. But if LG has a toggle, let's say that you have here, this is what LG needs to do. Instead of removing the feature, removing 120 black from insertion, instead of doing that and downgrading the feature, what they have to do is to improve it. And they should have here, below the OLED motion, 
they should have a brightness boost or a calibration setting, like a toggle that you turn on and it's my custom settings basically, but better because LG can do a much better job. Of course, they are professionals. They know what they're doing. They, they have instruments. They know how to calibrate this to be perfect. So basically, when you turn on black frame insertion, yes, you're going to get less peak brightness, but the mid tones and the near black detail is the same. It's, it's almost the same. That's what they have to do. My custom settings, basically, <laughs> they should have here. Plasma TV for gaming settings. You turn it on and you can use black frame insertion. <laughs> okay. So let me show you my custom settings. So you see what I'm doing here to get this result, which is like, I'm really, really, really amazed with this result. It's absolutely fantastic. Let me show you what I'm doing here. Max out, OLED brightness, the contrast, a screen brightness on 51 you still have perfect blacks, okay? If you increase it to 52, you no longer have perfect blacks, at least on my LG C1. Gamma 2.2, peak brightness on high. Using the color control app, you can change that peak brightness to high. Then we come here to color, color gamut native, color depth 50, warm 50. And we're going to do a 22 points calibration. So we're going to start in signal level 30. We increase this brightness to one. Okay. And the same, this is the same. I believe I am not 100% sure, but I believe this is the same as increasing red, green, and blue to one. Okay. Because some people are telling me, Oh, on my TV, I don't have this option, increase brightness level. The op the option on a different OLED, it might be called differently. It might have a different name. But if, if you don't have that option for some reason on SDR, these are SDR settings, and just increase red, green, and blue in one. Okay? Now, we go down to signal level 25. Adjust brightness 2. Then, signal level 20. Adjust brightness 3. We're not touching red, green, and blue, but... Again, you can increase red, green, and blue to three. It should be the same. Signal level 15, adjust brightness to five. Signal level 10, adjust brightness to nine. So now, mathematically, this should be an eight. But the reason why I changed it to nine on my TV is because nine was making that grayscale more uh, smoother okay it was looking the transition on the gray scale was looking uh, smoother with a nine but in your panel try an eight i think the eight might be more for everybody but in my my panel i needed to use a nine there i use a lot of test patterns to get these settings uh, working so 7.5 percent level adjust brightness 11 red, green, and blue. And then we go down to five, adjust brightness 14, red, green, and blue. And then we go down to 2.5, adjust brightness to 17, okay? And now on my specific TV, I had to increase this green in two because the gray scale was not looking gray. Okay, on that section of the calibration, I had to increase that green in two, but that's I do not recommend that because that's just on my own TV. And of course, ideally, you want to calibrate your own TV and check all these values. So I'm going to do a separate video, like a full tutorial of how I figure this out and try my best to communicate that to you and share all the test patterns that I use. So you can double check these settings on your TV and maybe even do a better job than I did. And if you have instruments, if you have a color emitter and all of that, you might be able to do a much better job. Okay. I did this with my eyes and a lot of effort. Okay. So yeah, man, give this a try and let me know how you like it, man. I'm 
so amazed with this. And you can use you can use gamma to even you can use BT eighteen eighty six, but that would defeat the purpose. If I do BT eighteen eighty six, it might be closer to to the BT eighteen eighty six accurate settings that HDTV test is recommending. But that that would defeat the purpose because all I'm trying to do is to increase the visibility. <laughs> so if I use BT eighteen eighty six, why am I tweaking that much the values? See what I'm saying? But you can try it. Uh, you try to calibrate for that, but this is a triumph, okay? Just absolutely amazing. And of course, on this LGC1, we have the option of medium, and it will be brighter. So if I, if I was to calibrate for medium, I would be more conservative. I would lower that uh, calibration because I don't need that much uh, visibility. The difference in brightness between medium and high is that with all emotion pro high on this lgc1 you are losing 62 percent on brightness why because all emotion pro high is reducing the persistence to 38 percent and then medium only works at 100 fps hertz or 120 fps hertz so medium is reducing the brightness in 50 percent okay so that's the brightness difference and low is 75% duty cycle. It doesn't improve the motion clarity significantly, but it's an option too if you want to calibrate for low. But medium would, would, would take a different calibration. And I, I'm actually going to calibrate medium for native HDR to get up to 400 nits highlights and get perfect visibility near black. So yeah, let me know if you tried these settings, how you like it, I am so happy, so happy, so, so excited to play with these settings. I've been playing a lot with this, and I'm so, so happy. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions, and if you have any questions.